My work and passion for water was born along with me in a small town at the tip of the Nile Delta, a green dot in the vast Sahara Desert. And then I moved to Louisiana where water is abundant. Transitioning from scarcity to abundance taught me the importance of water management. And so as an engineer, I spent my career developing and applying computer models to better understand and find ways to protect coastal and deltaic areas. The need for this work is urgent, as one in 10 people around the globe live and work along coastal areas that sit less than 10 meters or 30 feet above sea level. And this number is expected to grow in the future, especially in developing countries. But these areas are facing a host of challenges. They are battling against sea level rise, shoreline erosion by waves and storms, and subsidence, a term used to describe land sinking. They are also facing human-driven alterations, new farming technologies, levee systems, dredging and navigation improvements. While these human alterations provide great benefits to people, through better trade, more food production, and healthier economies. They come at a cost. The changes we are making to the natural systems are upsetting the balance needed for them to thrive. These amazing natural systems are collapsing in front of us. We are spinning our wheels, not finding solutions to preserve them for generations to come because of our inability to find an acceptable compromise. The problems start with preconceived notions. Engineers cannot grasp the human implications of projects. They are basically narrow-minded robots that eat gravel for breakfast. <laughs> Social scientists live in the cloud and practice voodoo science and don't contribute to solving real problems. Technical experts live in an ivory tower, disconnected from on-the-ground problems. Engaging the public is a waste of time, an unnecessary distraction. All these opinions have been expressed to me at some point, and they are all wrong. I know this because as an engineer, this is how I was educated. But these views are preventing the communities the scientists, and the decision makers from effectively tackling the real problems facing our coasts and our deltas. Although we have ecologists, engineers, public health specialists, geologists, and many other experts working to address these challenges, we are missing something. Today, we are practicing a linear assembly line approach where every group does their work and passes it on to the next. This results in little feedback and no meaningful collaboration. The problem is twofold. Scientists have largely been disconnected from local knowledge, leading the public to resent the approach of, trust us, we're the scientists, believing that science has all the answers and contributions from locals is not needed, leads to poor buy-in the solutions being offered and the tools being used. The second dimension of the problem lies in the largely self-imposed barriers and boundaries among the technical disciplines. As a result, there is a significant lack of appreciation of what every technical field has to offer. So how can we untangle these conflicting needs? How can we find viable solutions to protect natural systems and make them resilient in the face of all these threats and demands? The solutions come from an emerging, but not yet fully accepted approach. 
were contributions, thoughts, and ideas are equally and concurrently solicited from a broad range of technical experts and from the very people that call these places home. Education is key here, and one of the most effective educational tools is digital models. Essentially, models take what is known about the environment and express it through mathematical equations. Models can be used to look back at how natural systems evolved, or look forward and predict how they might look in the future. Models provide visuals about potential future outcome in a way that cuts across scientific jargon. An ecologist and an economist may both have PhDs, but that does not mean they speak the same scientific language. The visuals offered by computer models can be an amazing bridge among these various groups. The universal language, if you will, that everyone can use to communicate. But getting the science right is not enough. Most of the time, the solutions involve a compromise. Since the human demands and the ecosystem needs aren't always exactly the same. For example, an ecological solution may point to the need to create marsh to offset land loss. But that marsh creation may displace a popular recreation site, and bam, a conflict is born. This is not an exception. Often, there is a clash among culture, environment, and economy. Not only corporate economy, but people's income and livelihood. For these conflicts and clashes, models can provide alternative solutions, each with their own positives and negatives. And it will take the collaboration among the technical experts and with public input to find a compromise that could potentially become the most accepted scenario. The idea is not to dilute any technical field but rather to remove the boundaries and the barriers among them. We need to migrate from the linear assembly line approach to the more integrated collaboration. The new generations need to be educated from the very beginning that these complex natural systems require the contributions from a wide range of technical disciplines and with public input so the need is to broaden, not dismantle technical fields. At Tulane University, I am participating in founding a new educational program where we are removing the boundaries between engineering and geosciences by creating a new hybrid department where these two disciplines are being integrated. At the Water Institute of the Gulf, here in Baton Rouge, jointly with LSU River Center and the State of Louisiana Coastal Authority, I am collaborating with colleagues from a broad spectrum of backgrounds to develop a participatory modeling concept in which community members can engage and make adjustments to models and visualize the outcome of their ideas in near real time. This is a significant shift from the decades-old approach where science is being used to develop a plan and then giving people a few minutes at a meeting to react to it. This shift is necessary if we are going to find solutions to recognize the reality that coastal and deltaic areas are occupied spaces not pristine sandboxes that can be rearranged at will. What I ultimately wish to hear are three statements. Engineers are great problem solvers. We have the ability to listen to ideas and bring them to life. Social scientists are thoughtful about the human implications of projects and are effective communicators among the communities 
the scientists and the decision makers. Engaging the public is essential and central to the process. This new educational paradigm and full public engagement is not something we would like to do, it is something we must do. If we do not implement this integrated approach, these amazing natural systems are likely to collapse and vanish. And these models producing colored graphics and animations will be nothing but a cool computer game. This is not a game. This is not a science experiment. We must find and implement a compromise that will be acceptable to everyone in the community. That is people, industries, environment. This way, these beautiful natural systems can be preserved for generations to come. Thank you.